Welcome to Abiding Presence Ministries for Divine Worship on the Solemnity of the Body and Blood of Christ. Our celebrant will be Bishop William Cavins. The intention for today's celebration will be all those who are LGBTQ. Our entrance hymn is number 800. Let us go to the altar. <laughs> To the altar of God, come down the darkness and joy. Let us enter the courts of the house of the Lord and sing the glory of God. Praise with glad and trumpet, all the sound of the horn. Let the past remind you, sinner. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. My sisters and brothers, as we gather on this, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, for those times when we have approached the altar unworthily, have not fully understood the mystery of the body and blood of Christ, let us ask God for his pardon and his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God the Father of mercies through the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace to people of the world. 
We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, Son of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, we see our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you are the Holy One, you Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory and the glory of God the pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Creator and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be attentive. reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then having sent certain young men of the Israelites offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, all that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. He then took the blood and sprinkled it on the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our blessing God is our communion in the blood Our blessing cup is our communion in the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good He has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. 
sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and the more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For with the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of heifers' ashes can sanctify those who are defiled, so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousness, consciences, consciences, consciences from dead works, to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant. Since the death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promise eternal, the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sacrifice of peace. 
According to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? 
he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him wherever he enters. Say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe our sins away. One of the things that seems to have fallen out of fashion today is that people do not understand what RSVP means at the bottom of invitations. It's the initials for the French term, responsez-vous s'il vous plaît. The favor of a response is requested. People find it difficult to plan to be at events. And in the course of our readings today, you see events transpire that you're very familiar with. You see the establishment of the Eucharist in the Last Supper. It's a meal that we've all been invited to participate in. Few, if any, do. But let's take a look at what the scriptures are telling us about this meal. They start out by telling us about the old covenant, the covenant that God, the Trinity, made with the people of Israel, a covenant that still exists. And it required for Passover that they recall when the angel of death passed over them in Egypt. And so they would sacrifice new lambs and put the blood on the lintels of their homes. Now they don't actually do that today, at least that is my understanding, they don't. However, it was the beginning of blood sacrifices. Nothing, I can't even say beginning, I've misspoke there. Blood sacrifices 3,000 years ago were not uncommon. You had various religions sacrificing bulls, pigeons, whatever. So it's not unusual to see that there's going to be a blood sacrifice here in with the Hebrews. And Moses spread that blood on the altar. But when we arrive at our second reading, we see the clear parallel that that animals that were offered then that Jesus himself is now that offering. And it is his blood poured out on the altar of the earth that saves each one of us. And so when we come to that Eucharistic 
narrative. This is my body. This is my blood. It is not just words. And too many times today, we think of them as just words because there are so many words floating around. But we're told elsewhere that unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now, some of my Protestant friends do not believe in the real presence. They believe the meal is simply a memorial. But we see in those words from John that it is much more than just a memorial. That bread, that wine, takes upon itself through the power of the Spirit and the words of institution, the divine nature of God. And you and I are privileged to receive it. And so when we approach this altar, we do so in reverence, acknowledging that we take within ourselves that which created us so that it can continue to nourish us, to sustain us, to guide us. This feast of the Corpus Christi, as it was previously known, has been transferred in many places to this coming Sunday. But we choose here to call this a holy day of obligation because this is one of those essential beliefs of our faith. That the body and blood of Christ is real and present on our altars, in our tabernacles. And we need to pay attention to what we actually believe in that matter. And if we don't understand it, fine, but then seek more information, if you will. Spend more time reading the scriptures. Spend more time in prayer. Learn more and open yourself up to the Spirit to guide you in your belief. In that way, when you eat Christ's body and blood, you do it worthily and not to your own damnation, as we heard in the sequence today. Praise, O Zion, our creator, our maker, who has deigned to feed us from his own body and blood. the stand and profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Each time we celebrate the Eucharist, Christ is poured out in love for us, and at the same time gathers us as one body, one people. This Eucharist sustains us on the journey of life. We now offer our prayers on behalf of this world in which we are privileged to live and our neighbors with whom we share it. Our 
response is, raise us up, O Lord. Raise, raise us, us up, up, O Lord. Lord. For the church, that in celebrating the Eucharist and sharing in the body and blood of Christ, we will hear the call to be missionary people, go out to feed the hungry, care for the poor, and love those we meet on the way. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Raise us up, O Lord. Lord. For leaders of nations, that they work together to ensure that the world's most hungry people have food and water. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Raise us up, O Lord. Lord. For the hungry, that the world's food basket will be shared among all people. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Raise us up, O Lord. Lord. For the COVID-19 pandemic, I will bring, bir- bring to birth a greater sense of compassion among all peoples and a greater willingness to provide care for those in need. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the light of the life of the world. Raise us up, O Lord. For the sick and those in danger of death, that they be comforted by God's abiding presence. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Raise, Raise us, us up, up, O Lord. Lord. For all who grieve, especially the family of Marilyn Jankowski, that their mourning will be turned to dancing as they hear, hold, and welcome the message of the resurrection in their hearts. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Raise us up, O Lord. Lord. For people who live with disability, that community businesses, groups, and organizations will give shape to society, will carefully consider the needs of all, so that those who live with disability can function well and live fully. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Raise us up, O Lord. The earth of the soil from which all food comes will be farmed with care, preserving its integrity for future generations. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Raise us up, O Lord. For our own needs, for those who stand in need of prayer and have no one to pray for them, those who have asked for our prayers, especially those who remember now. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Raise us up, O Lord, the loving God. May the food we eat at this table satisfy all our hungers and strengthen us to share your bread with others. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 816, To Be Your Bread.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and good of all the church. Lord, may the bread and cup we offer bring your church the unity and peace they signify. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. All powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the true and eternal priest who established this unending sacrifice. He offered himself as a victim for our deliverance and taught us to make this offering in his memory. As we eat his body, which he gave for us, we grow in strength. As we drink his blood, which is poured out for us, we are washed clean. Now with the angels and archangels and all the whole company of heaven, we sing the unending hymn of your praise. Almighty and eternal God, we acknowledge your greatness. All your actions show your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own likeness and set us over the whole world to serve you, our creator, and to rule over all creatures. Even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but helped us to seek and find you. Again and again, you offered a covenant to us and through the prophets taught us to hope for salvation. Most high God, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten one to be our savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, a human like us in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to those in sorrow, joy. In fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death, that by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, almighty God, as his first gift to those who believe, to complete his work on earth, and to bring us the fullness of grace. Father, may this Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings. Let them become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we celebrate the great mystery which he left us as an everlasting covenant. He always loved those who were his own in this world. When the time came for him to glorify you by his, glorify you as heavenly father, he showed the depth of his love. While they were at supper, 
he took bread. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, he took the cup filled with wine. He gave you thanks. In giving the cup to his disciples, said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Almighty God, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice, which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice which you have given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit, Gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially the patriarchs of the East and of the West, with me, your unworthy bishop, and all bishops, deacons, and priests everywhere. Remember those who take part in this offering, those present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Today we recall all of those members of the LGBTQ community. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Eternal God, in your great mercy, grant that we, your children, may enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, and your apostles and saints. Then in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Creator. Forever and ever. United is one family in Christ. We dare to pray as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from all sin and anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. We live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with each other some sign of peace. Peace be with you, Jim. Peace be with all of you at home.
This is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. act of spiritual communion for those that cannot receive today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and desire to receive you in my soul. Since I, could now at this, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The table is prepared. Come, eat, and drink. Our communion hymn is number 824. Amen. El Cuerpo de Cristo. Amen. El Cuerpo de Cristo. Amen, la sangre del Señor, eating your body, drinking your blood, we become what we receive. Amen, amen. and your rising. Amen. We can tear your Senor's rest with heat on us. Amen. Amen. The cuerpo de Cristo. Amen. The sangre del Señor. Eating your body. Drinking your blood, we become what we receive. Amen. 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 Sacrifice you gave us. Amen.
Thanksgiving is number 140, O oh, Saving Victim. Jesus Christ, you give us your body and blood in the Eucharist as a sign that even now we share your life. May we come to share it completely in the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us by way of Zoom this evening. We will be having Mass here on Sunday, Divine Worship at 10 o'clock. We invite those of you that are vaccinated to uh, feel free to join us. We do encourage those of you that have not taken the opportunities of getting vac vaccinated against the COVID virus to do so. There are many locations that do not even require uh, appointments now. We passed one coming home on Monday, set up uh, on, the, on the side of the street in uh, the towns just south of us. So we know they are out there. We do apologize for um, our technical er issues we had with showing you the beginning of our holy hour. Uh, earlier today. Um, we're still working out the bugs on how to zoom and connect it to everything. So uh, please bear with us uh, as we learn how to keep up with technology. This is Pride Month. There are many activities going on. This coming Wednesday, there is a forum at the Methodist Church down in Windermere. Um, on inclusivity. I'm not able to attend this year, but any of you that can, you can, uh, Jennifer Stiles Williams, the pastor there, if you just give that church a call, they will tell you how to sign in uh, on, because they're, they're going to do it both in person and uh, over uh, a live, live feed. So if you'd like to learn more about how there are welcoming churches here in the Orlando community, please uh, take a look at that. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but as always, it'll be in the bulletin next Sunday or I'll make myself a list for next, uh, for next Sunday. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God.
Our closing hymn is number 598, La Dolce, La Dolce Domino. <laughs> In the faith of Christ we walk hand in hand, white before our path as the Lord has planned, shining a torch of faith in our land. In the name of Christ Jesus, the Dante, the Dante Thank you. 